everybody thank you so much for tuning into the real estate lab we are talking about what's the title of today i think it was um uh home buyers military buyers are winning in austin texas and i think this is really important because we have a lot of military bases around austin and all of us randy jj and myself and our special guests are all really proficient working with va buyers or military families however there's a lot of misinformation out there about military loans about how it works and so today we just wanted to kind of shed some light on that so everybody has a little bit of uh, a little bit more education a little bit more exposure to it and right now again they're winning like it's it's really exciting that even people who are in the military and using VA loans can get homes it's really big right now so Jason thank you so much for showing up to our podcast can you tell us a little bit more a little bit about yourself yeah, no, one, I, I want to thank you all for, for having me on. And, and I have been in the mili- in the industry, the, real, the, the lending industry, for a little over 20 years. Um, worn a lot of hats. Um, but, you know, I come from a military family. Um, my grandfathers were World War II veterans. My dad's a Vietnam vet. And my brother, older brother, is a combat medic. Uh, his first deployment was in Desert Storm shield back in august of 1989 and he had multiple combat deployments after that and i think for me what i've seen you know i always tell people that i'm a i'm a child of post-traumatic stress everybody in my family the males that served have it my dad still suffers from it today and so i've seen a lot of the after effects of combat and you know being in this industry and 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 choosing to change my direction about 11 years ago to to solely serve the veteran, the military community, because there's just a lack of education. You know, you alluded to that in in the openers about the myths and misconceptions. And I think there's a lot of those out there. And I think it's important that people like us, like you guys that will advocate and educate this benefit, that way they can use this benefit that they rightfully earned. I I just want to jump in so everybody knows. I want to thank Jason for being able to do this while he's driving back from teaching a class. Uh, And since he's driving back, there might be some in and out as far as the video on the podcast episode. So, um, JJ, Randy, do you have anything that you want to ask uh, Jason? What would be kind of just to help kick things off? What would be um, a a pretty uh, basic list of all the benefits that do come for that VA loan? Well, I mean, you know, number one, and, and, you know, you look at it from the civilian perspective, which is what I am and I, we are, is, you know, there's no down payment. That's the biggest thing. And if, mm-hmm. if you know, especially with being around military installations where most military families are going to move or do a permanent change of station, you know, every three to four years, if they are educated about this benefit, they can literally build a real estate portfolio with no money in down payment. They could have three or four homes under this benefit and not put a dime of down payment down. That would cost me roughly about $160,000 just in down payment. So this benefit is amazing and just in that aspect. And how many can you, how many homes can you have uh, under a VA loan? So you can have as many as your, as your entitlement will allow. So every veteran, you know, has a specific set of entitlement. It's typically calculated off of the uh, the conforming loan limits, which we know just are going up in 2024, which yeah. is great. So if, if they're educated and this is used in that way, if they buy smartly, um, they could have several homes under that entitlement and have somebody else renting them out for them, building wealth through real estate. Oh, so they don't even have to be owner occupied when they go through this process. They can actually do investment purchases as well. So they can turn it into an investment property, okay. but it has That's to be initially initially purchased under a owner occupied. Okay. But they can they can if they leave to go to a different duty station or if it's a veteran that's just moving, they can lease the property. That lease will offset the payment completely, hundred mm-hmm. percent, and then they can which doesn't affect them in qualifying for the new home. Good. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. So great. it's literally the best of all these features all smashed into one, you know? Right. You do a lot of business in Texas in general, right? 
all over Texas? I do. Yep. Um, can you tell us about just anything about the types of buyers that are buying in or in and around the Austin area? So I know we've got multiple bases. We have a base in, well, formerly Fort Hood, so like the Colleen area. I know, JJ, you've done a ton of business out there. Yes, you're in Austin now, but you also have a lot of connections out there. Um, we've got San Antonio. Yep. We've got, uh, where else do we have? There's nothing in Dallas. What else do we have? Jack, Jason. Um, so as far as, as far as the bases go, or just kind of like that, what that buyer profile looks like. Yeah, let's go with either one. I think both of those are important for people to understand. So specific around Austin, you, you'll actually get some of the officers that are stationed at Fort Cavazos, I think is what it's called now. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. you'll get some officers that, that want to commute from the outskirts of Austin into Colleen because they you know, they don't want to live in Colleen or Harker Heights or Coppers Cove or whatever that is. So you'll get those those buyer types in the Austin area. Um, you know, your O2s, O3, so lieutenants, you know, things like that. They're doing they're doing OK. Right. So, you know, that is your your typically your buyer profile that's going to be in the Austin area. Um, what you're going to get if you're in the Colleen area your average soldier is going to be, you know, E5 sergeant or below average. Okay. So you got to look at, you know, what their, what their pay rates are with dependents, if they have kids or not kids, or if they're married, what that, what that income looks like. Unfortunately, the government has done a very good job of, of keeping their pay up with inflation rates. So affordability in the military community is a big thing, but you know, that's going to be your average buyer profile, probably, you know, that 250,000 to 325 or $350,000 price point, depending on debt load, that's going to be your average sales price. And I want to make sure I heard you right that you said, unfortunately, they're not keeping up with inflation. Is that Correct. right? Yeah, I mean, Man, with, with the inflationary in rates and, and, and products and services and, and things of that nature, you know, we, we, we saw a, a decent, when we say decent, decent for the government is a 3% raise, right? But we've all seen as consumers what inflation's looked like to us over the past, you know, 12 months. So, mm -hmm. yeah. cost of goods are outpacing their pay, unfortunately. So the great yeah. thing about a lot of industries that Yeah, a lot of people are like that. And, and unfortunately, the government doesn't yeah. pay our service members a whole lot. You know, nobody's going to get rich being being in the military. Um, mm -hmm. But the great thing about, you know, military pay is it's consistent, right? This is why they're a great buyer profile. It's guaranteed income. You know, and, it, and and part of it's not taxed. So their housing expense and their, their food expense isn't taxed. So we can gross that amount up by 25% to help them in qualifying. So there's lots of little nuances like that that we can use to help kind of maybe bump up their budget and things of that nature. Right. And you, you were previously saying um, if they're educated on it. So do you often find that there's a lot of veterans out there that just do not have, they don't, they don't know about the VA loan program or they don't have the right understanding of it or, or both? I think it's, it's all of those things. And, and what I try to look at is you've got to look at the military construct or the Department of Defense as a whole. Their one job is to keep these men and women mission ready. I don't care if you're you're turning wrenches or whatever it is. Their job is to be mission ready, not to necessarily understand the benefits that are afforded to them while they're on active duty. And even when they separate and, you know, Texas is a very popular state for veterans that are moving here because of jobs and property taxes and and, you know, just Texas Veterans Commission and all these different um, things that are afforded to them by being a veteran in the state of Texas. If you were to ask them what they understood about their VA home loan benefit, I would say 99% of them would say they know very little to nothing. Wow. And it's beca because yeah. when, and I'm, I'm going to give you some examples. So one of my, when my, when my 
one of my really good friends who just retired in November after 22, 22 years as a helicopter pilot. He sent, sent me videos of him setting through what they call TAPS classes. Means TAPS is an acronym. And it's all of the classes they have to go through when they're about to retire. Well, they get about 30 minutes from somebody at the VA um, giving them an educational, you know, class on the VA home loan benefit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 30 minutes from someone who's never written a loan, never sold a home, never been boots on the ground like we are in our communities ever. They just say, okay, right. you guys have this benefit. This is it. Here's your packet. Thanks for your service. Here's your cat card. See you later. Right. That's it. And That's so insane. I think it is insane, right? I talked yeah. to, was in Oklahoma, um, speaking at an event uh, a couple of weeks ago, and there was a gentleman who is a retired command sergeant major. So he's an E9, right? That is the 1% of the 1% in the military. 28 years of service and never used his VA home loan benefit. Oh my goodness. That kills me. That's like people that uh, buy a house and they never file a homestead. It's like they don't know. So you, you, just to su resummarize this, there are a large portion of people. Did you say 28%? Correct. There are 28% of people that have eligibility to use a VA loan but because they don't have the knowledge or um, maybe a support system around them, they've not taken advantage of those benefits that they've earned. I, oh my goodness. Correct. And there's so many benefits to it. So it's mind blowing. Talked about, there's tons. So, okay. Um, let's talk about, a little bit about just like VA loans in general. So I, there are a lot of myths okay. out there. Like I'm going to throw some out and, and I just want you to talk about them a little bit. So like, VA loans, are they only eligible for first time buyers? No, it's, it's repeat, repeat, repeat. Um, we've had clients that have, that have, that have listened to our educational events and classes that we put on that have literally used their VA loan four and five times just while they're on active duty. Wow. So it is not just for first time home buyers. Anybody can use it. Um, that's eligible and lots of repeat buyers out there. But I believe that that myth that you described is one of the biggest that keep people from using it because they think they have to be a first time home buyer to use it or to Randy's point er or earlier, if they use it one time, they can't use it again. It's one and done. And we confirmed it's, it, you, as long as it's your primary. Correct. You can use it, right? That's correct. But, you know, because the, the back of the benefit is not to build a real estate portfolio, but if you use it under the rules, you can certainly do that. Because here's the greatest thing about it is that you can go buy a quadplex. You can live in one unit, run out the other three, cash flow those. And then after 12 or 24 months, you're ready to move into a single family. Keep your quadplex, have four cash flowing units, buy a single family. That's a very clean Texas thing to do. There's a lot of it quadplexes is. in clean as well. They're more affordable than, 100%. you know, Austin. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. All right. So I've got another one. For Curious you. too, regarding that geographic. What's that? No, you go, you do it. It's choppy. On. I was curious when we we're talking about the, the outskirts of Austin, geographically, do you, where do you see these like lieutenants and stuff commuting from? So they're going to be at a point that may be closest to them commute wise to Colleen, right? Mm -hmm. I actually have done a loan and it was a condo in Austin in downtown Austin for a, a young Lieutenant, um, right. that wanted to commute from downtown Austin. So yeah. I think, you know, that if, if they are, if they are marketed to correctly, there's no telling where they may go because if anybody's been to Colleen, Texas, not exactly a, um, a Mecca of homes in Colleen, Texas. Um, yeah. I have family down in Copper's Cove. My, my stepmom's brother lives down there and, and it's gotten better over the years, but, yeah. um, but a lot of these guys that, that may come here and a lot of these officers, they have money. 
right? They've saved over the yeah. years and things like that. They can afford to live in Austin. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up in clean Fort Hood. Okay. It, it's a little yeah. Fort Hood to me. Class of 2000. Yeah. It's me. I'm, I call it Fort Hood too, but I try to be politically correct occasionally. Yeah. So. Fort of Austin. So yeah, now. anywhere from central Austin to Georgetown to Round Rock yep. to Taylor, Hutto yep. to Salado, all that's Gerald. Yeah, Temple we've we've maybe. seen people, you know, buying especially new construction, single families in those areas, um, because mm -hmm. it's also a very desirable community, not just for them, but for people moving to Texas in general. So if they're going right. to occupy that property for several years and their intent is to rent it, it's a very marketable property once they leave and go to their different duty station. Exactly. And also, oh, when yeah. when a uh, active duty or, or veteran. Mm -hmm. uh, how do they find a lender? Because sometimes they, they assume lend, a lender may not do VA. Is there a certain company yeah. or how, how do you guide them? That? Man, that's a, that's a tough one because there are, you know, several companies out there that they market heavily to the active military and the veteran community. Right. Okay. Right. That they, they're what I refer to as a thousand pound gorilla in the room. Mm -hmm. So in a, most of my clients that come to me, um, come to me, maybe already pre-approved from one of these entities. Okay. Right. So what I talk to them about is I'm a very consultative um, person and take a very consultative approach to not just, Hey, push button, get mortgage, which is a lot what they do. Uh -huh. I look at finances. I look at investment side. I look at their tendencies. I ask them questions about what they want to do. And I build a little presentation for them based on those things. So we talk about equity appreciation. We talk about not just helping them manage this debt for their home going forward, but we talk about, okay, maybe they are somebody who has a TSP. Maybe they want to reinvest that TSP into something that gains them a bigger return, right? Something like right. that. But I have, I have connections and in, in financial planners that typically have prior service um, that are, you know, got into this, this space to help them manage this debt and help their money make them money. Right. So I think that's what sets me apart from people. And then in this call center type environment is I'm going to help you make money. I'm right. just not going to take your order like a McDonald's drive through employee. Exactly. To me that that's the equivalent. And I, you know, it, that's just my opinion, but I think that's where we can make a difference in people who truly care about this process as an investment type process, not just, hey, it took you 30 minutes to get me a pre-approval and 99% of the time it's wrong. <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> uh, so I have a, I mean, sad, I have you know, I mean, I'm a, yeah. We hear a lot about um, VA appraisals taking longer. Is that true? Um, no, um, the average time in the state of Texas is about 10.4 days. Okay. From date of order to date of acceptance. Um, during, even during COVID when it was just, you know, cuckoo for cocoa puffs and everybody was busy and praisers were stretched the gills. We were still seeing about 14 to 17 days. So we were still honoring 30 day contracts all day long. Oh yeah. So I think, you know, for people, for agents, or even the consumer who may see this, great questions to ask your lender are, how long does it take you to process a file? Number one, how many days? What is your average close time? How many days does it take you to get, you know, to the closing table? To me, those are metrics that every loan officer or company should measure, period. That's the standard nowadays. So we, my standard on my team is that I want our files processed in seven days outside of title and appraisal period. Fast. And we do that 96.1% of the time, mm -hmm. right? That's our average close time is 21.4 days. So I think being able to articulate those metrics to people will take some of the stress out of the process for them. And our job and the way I see it, is to remove those stress points. Right. I got you. I'm going to take care of you and your family because I have built a process that's specifically for you, not for me, for you. Do VA loans have higher interest rates? 
Historically, they have about a, they're about a quarter of a percent lower than conforming uh, interest rates. So no, they do that not make typically. people happy, huh? Well, I hope, good. and you know, we're trending downwards. You know, that's the good news, right? I mean, the market's, you know, I think headed in the right direction. Still a lot of room for improvement, but you know, I think that this is part of where we, as a as a as a team, and in, in, in what we do, is that they may close at a higher rate now, but we're going to manage that debt well into the future for them, right? We're gonna we're gonna reach out when when rates get low enough. In a, in a refinance makes sense, may make sense to them. It may not. They may be wanting to sell the property they're going to move in a year, right? That's when a refinance doesn't make sense. But there's a lot of vultures out there who will try to sell them on that otherwise. And we see it every day. Are also situational. Is, is there a certain like credit score? Is there like a minimum that you could work with? Or how does that look when getting? No, yeah, I know. The, the beautiful thing about the VA home loan is that if you look at the, the guidelines specifically, the VA requires no credit score. Zero. Lenders will put their own credit score based on their appetite for risk, and that's fair. Yes. Yeah. So, like us as a as a company, we go down to 580. There's some that go below that. Some are 600, 620, and all points in between. Mm -hmm. What what we but what we hear and what a lot of veterans will hear is they'll call a certain company and they'll say, "Oh, well, the VA requires a 620. You're at a 615. Let's do some credit repair, because that's hmm. always a great idea." Hmm. And typically they jack their credit up somehow yeah. instead of saying, Hey, look, I can't help you, but I know somebody who can, let me refer you to them so they can take care of you. That's what we should do. Right. But so if this if is I'm why these buyer, questions are so vitally important. If I have a buyer, that's a, a VA borrower, so former military or maybe family member or something, yep. but they're using a VA loan. Why would a seller not accept their loan? This is really important. I think this has happened oh, man. in the past. This is a huge thing. I mean, and, and, I, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preface what I'm going to say to you guys just in, with, this, with this quote that I, that I tell people every time I go speak somewhere or teach. Is that the greatest threat to, to veteran home ownership is ignorance? Ooh, yeah. It's not interest rates, it's none of those things. We have to do a better job of educating people because when, when somebody goes to make that offer and that that you know, and let's so let's not discount that listing agent's experience. They may have had a bad experience, but most of the time it's not the loan itself, it's the person and the practitioner of the loan that was a train wreck. It wasn't the VA, the VA benefits an inanimate object. It can't defend itself, right? We are, we are the people who defend it. And so when I'm, you know, listing agents may think that the appraisals always come in short or underwriting takes too long or they're too restrictive or they take too long to do that or no down payment means a weak buyer or all these different things and it's all crap. It's what we tell ourselves because this is what my broker that was in the business 37 years ago has told me. Well, that's an interesting point. So has it improved since the past? Is it like old rumors that? Yeah, and I would say that from? like my, my dad's VA loan, my dad was in Vietnam, you know, in the 1970s, this loan sucked. Interesting. <laughs> and so there, if the, for some of those older folks who have been in the business that long, that may be their standard. And that's fair. I understand that I'm not discounting their experience. But my job is to lead them across the aisle, right? Let's exercise some leadership skills to get them into our camp. So when we're talking to listing agents, it's like, okay, you don't want to accept this VA offer. Why? That's it. And shut up. Let them tell you why they won't want to do it. And more often than not, it's like, well, you know, my seller really would wish that they had a down payment. It, they, they need more skin in the game. The skin in the game quote for me is very emotional and it's also data driven. So I have friends of mine who came back from this 20 year war with less limbs than they started with. That's their skin in the game. Mm -hmm. They earned the right to this benefit. My wife's one of my wife's closest friends was killed by an IED in 2017. His wife is now entitled to that benefit. That's her skin in the game. Her kids have no father because of that. So that's the emotional side of it. 
Mm -hmm. The business side is this, is that, you know, let's say that we have one of those savvy borrowers that may have their money in investments somewhere. Let's say those investments are, are pulling them a eight to 10% return on their money year over year right now. Why in the hell would I want them to pull money out of an eight to 10% return investment to put down on a house to make your seller feel better? Mm. That's a Financially, point. that's a poor decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I when I put it in those in that context, I won't say I'm batting a thousand, but it's pretty damn close. Mm -hmm. Because we're trying to play on people's emotions, number one, but we're also giving them data. Don it data is non emotional, right? It's yeah. data over drama. And so we talk about those things and appraisals. And there's an appraisal stat that I'll share with you in 2022. 91.5% of all VA appraisals that were done nationally came in at or above value. Ooh. Wow. 91.5%. Awesome. Conventional, conventional, conventional was 92%. You got to help me with this. Mm -hmm. with this. Why similar. were they at that amount? I have a theory, but I want you to help us understand why they were at that amount. Such a high percentage. Well, the VA is the only loan program that gives you two rebuttal processes, number one. So even, even when they come in under value, you've got two chances to rebut the process and tied water or in the reconsideration of value. Yes. Okay. And here's a, here's a feather in the VA's cap. So the VA lenders conference was back in May in Kansas City this year. There were representatives from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, so conventional, okay, at the VA lenders conference. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are going to start a pilot program adopting Tidewater and ROV for conventional products. Oh. Hmm. Because it works so well. That's it. You know what I mean? Interesting. So I think that when we provide these data and these statistics for people, I think it kind of takes some of the drama out of it for them and the reasonable side of them will kick in saying, Hey, well, that makes sense. And you know, my job is to help them understand that we got what we we're going to control what we control on my side, right? We're going to walk you through the reconsideration of value process. If we have to get there, the tidewater process I actually wrote what's called a VA valuation guide for agents that walks them through that process step by step. And I hand that so, thing out like candy. <laughs> Jason, can you do us a favor? Right. Can you talk a little bit about the, the cost of PMI for VA loans? Yeah, so, you know, the, the one, one of the many great features about it is it doesn't have private mortgage insurance like an FHA loan or a, or a conventional loan will have, you know, the monthly mortgage insurance. Obviously, there's a VA funding fee, which is a financed fee that's paid up front, okay? If you have a disability rating, um, that's that's exempt, so you're, you don't have to pay that. Or if you're active duty and you have a Purple Heart exemption, you also do not have to pay that funding fee. Okay, so those are some of the things that that we walk them through when we go through this very consultative process, um, because this is a benefit that they'll they'll use forever, right? If we if we teach them the right way. They'll use this thing forever. Mm -hmm. And I apologize if I, because I did cut out for about five minutes, so I hope I didn't miss this part. But it sounds like it's really rather important to have a VA specific lender versus just any, all the lenders out there that can do VA loans, but to to find somebody like yourself that specializes in it, so that you can make sure that you're, uh, you know, touching everything. I mean, I'm obviously a little biased, but yeah, I think that's true. Um, yeah. and, I'm, and I'm going to give you a, you know, a couple of examples of, of that is the average loan officer in America closes three to four VA loans a year. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. So the, the analogy that I use is if I were going to give myself, you know, expert status at three to four times a year, um, that would make me a fit, that would make me a fitness expert, right? Cause that's about how many times Jason works out. So yeah. it's, it's, and these are why it's important to ask these questions, right? We got to ask better questions of people. And 
and we as a team, we close anywhere between 150 to 200 VA purchase loans a year. That's amazing because awesome. I mean, yeah, you're giving such great information and I just hope and wonder for all the veterans out there that they get they get access to this information, just like you're saying that they're educated on it. And that's the only resource to really go to is somebody who's closing 150 to 200 of them per year. So yeah, and, it, and it's there's I mean, there are 50,000 VA approved lenders in the country, 50,000. But not all of them are good at it. And I think Okay, so just because you're a lender doesn't mean you get to process VA loans, you do have to you do have to get certified in it. But like you're, what you're, you're saying is that even if you are certified, it doesn't mean that you're a master. Correct. I mean, yeah, you can you can get a, a be a VA approved lender. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is where the research comes in. There's a lot of people that, that might tell you they're good at it. Well, ask them how many loans they close a year. I mean, I think mm -hmm. that's a very I think that's a very qualifying question. Right. Same yeah. thing of the company. You know, what does your company do for that? And there's a lot of companies out there that that, you know, they they say they have the veterans best interest in mind. Man, do they? I don't mean, that's probably questionable. Um, but I think this is where, you know, us doing things like this, um, being more of the advocates of the benefit in our communities, that's how we truly move that needle for people. Because if we, we don't put ourselves out there to be educators and talk about these things and dispel the myths, is it really their fault if they go get taken advantage of by somebody else? Mm -hmm. right. That's rough. I had, yeah. uh, this is probably a, a relevant topic for a lot of people right now because of the interest rates. I had a, sure. a seller who was a VA and they had a, a juicy 2.75 interest rate. And yep. so of, of course, naturally many calls came in asking, is your loan assumable? And yep. we had done enough research to know only to other veterans, but then um, we did actually come in, in contact with another veteran or is that correct, that information that we had? Perhaps that was wrong information so, as well. So VA assumptions is the only time that a civilian can assume, can have a VA loan is in the assumption process. It does not oh, have to be a veteran. It does not have to be a veteran. Okay. But here's the, here's the catch to that. And this is why I wouldn't recommend it unless it's like a familial situation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is if I'm a, vet, a non-veteran assuming a veteran's loan, that veteran's entitlement stays yes. with that property forever okay so it may hinder them in using their entitlement oh, wow. as they go down the road mm -hmm. okay if it's veteran to veteran that entitlement basically swaps okay wow that's uh that's i'm so sorry the yeah that transaction was about a year ago and that's making me remember that we started saying we'll only consider this for other veterans and it's because of what you just said because and i think you're that's right the, the civilian yeah. can do it but it was too risky and so we said we'll only consider it if you're a veteran okay and that's the smartest thing to do i mean they're yeah. very sexy right now right i mean 2.875 <laughs> two and a quarter yeah. percent interest rates but here's some of the catches with that, and it's a great thing to do, but a very small subset of the market will actually fit into that category, Yeah, is if they have to bridge the gap between the amount owed and uh -huh. what the sales price is, I have not found a lender in the yeah. country that will bridge that gap. Yeah. In the state yeah. of Texas, you cannot do that because it violates RA6 laws. So you cannot even do it here. Yeah, or you have a big down payment. Or just a bit, or somebody that, that's the only time it makes sense is somebody maybe had a lot of cash or they had a lot of cash from a sale. So uh -huh. you're talking about eh, that of the market. Yeah. But what I will right. say is this, our job is also to be marketers, right? Mm -hmm. The best marketer wins. And if I had an, a, a VA listing and it was assumable, I would market the crap out of it. Yep. Uh -huh. Well, hey, Jason, uh, we appreciate you so much. I think we're like winding down, yeah. we have to get going soon. Um, but can you leave, like, what is the thing that maybe we haven't talked about that you feel everyone should know about VA loans or about the process that you just, you, you want to make sure that you hammer home for everybody? And then what's the best way for people to reach you after you give us that? So I'd say based on some of the things that I experienced, we've talked about a lot of them, honestly. So that's great. I'm, I'm thankful for that. But one of the big things that we always address is that because people think it's a VA loan, it's no cost. That there's no closing cost to it. Or you can roll your closing cost into the loan. Okay. So for my list, for the listeners out there, 
closing costs have to be paid, mm -hmm. right? And, and raising the sales price for the seller to cover them is not rolling them in. That's not what that means, right? It's just a variation of that. But they have to be paid by the seller, by you, a combination of those two things. And so I think it's very important that we articulate those things to our to the veterans that may hear this and, and use this benefit is that it doesn't mean you, you can't buy, you can buy a house with no money, right? You can't be destitute, right? We're gonna need things and have active cash on hand and things of that nature. And it's a, it's a benefit that I think there's no rival, but there's also things that we can do better to educate those people in the community that we serve. Right. That's so incredible. Thank I think you're you. a so huge, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I appreciate it. And, and if, you know, I, I love doing things like this and, 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 you know, so if there's anything I can do for you guys, you know, obviously into the future, you let me know. But, um, you know, if they, people want to get in touch with me, you can go to my website at, at balongboss.com. Um, and you can follow me on social same way. Um, it's, you know, at VA Loan Boss. And, you know, I've tried to brand and market myself uh, in that way for the for quite some time. And and I run for agents that are out there. Uh, Renee's a part of this, too. Um, I host I have a, a a a private Facebook group that I run. It's called the Modern Military Mastermind. Mm -hmm. And we have interviews in there. We have all kinds of resources from agents around the country of all skill levels, prior spouse, you name it. It is a place of contribution and sharing. So if you're an agent out there, you guys are welcome. Come bring it. You know, I'd love to have people. I do Friday interviews on there. And what I what I want to try to do is is always come from a place of contribution to educate people. That's it. Somebody did that for me a long time ago, and now it's time to pay it forward. And, and you know, that's the part of the business that I love the most. So if there's anything I can well, do for you guys there, you let me know. JJ, Randy, and I are all yeah, signing thank up. Thank you for being such an incredible resource thing. for the veterans. No, I appreciate you guys and, and your, your willingness to do this and, and cause it, it matters, right? We got to do more and, and be more and, and be more visible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thanks again. Thanks everybody. And thanks everybody for watching. All right. Thank you.